Is this, in a sense, being seen as a strategic partnership that's been taken to another level? You've seen the sort of ebbs and flows in the Indo-US relationship over the years. We seem to have come a very, very long way to the point where America is transferring technologies, which, as Raoul Kaval said, they do not even transfer to some of their alliance partners. It's certainly the next big thing in uh, India-US relations. There's no doubt about it. If you take uh, the India Indo-US nuclear deal as the starting point, in some senses, 2005 to 2008, this is taking it to what I would call uh, the great big tech handshake that we've seen. And even before they finish their bilaterals, we've seen three major announcements come out. The signing of the jet engine deal with uh, GE and uh, HAL. You have the semiconductor deal with Micron. And of course, very interestingly, and my favorite area, the Artemis program in terms of uh, space and, you know... Uh, us how how exciting is that for you? <laughs> NASA and ISRO coming together to go for a joint space mission. Really? I mean, uh, look, I was just speaking to the ISRO chairman at the, uh, in, in Trivandrum, and you were there as well, mm -hmm. where we talked about how we are struggling with our Indian manned mission that's there, and he has difficulty in getting a lot of things done. I think this is, you know, the Artemis program intends to put uh, America back in the moon, manned missions to the moon uh, by 2025. And also, they've also promised uh, uh, us a place in the space station. So what we're going to get is astronaut training that we would have found great difficulty in getting earlier. So it's, it's a very exciting development. I'd also say that the uh, engines, jet engines, look, we had tried building these engines and we know we have failed, the Kaveri was a failed project. And I think this is a huge leap. These are, this is technology that they normally don't sell. What it does symbolize is to a couple of things, uh, uh, Rajdeep. One, that uh, the recognition of India and the, despite the challenges that were there, you know, we have had issues over Ukraine, over our relations with Russia, and yet America would like to be our friend uh, that's there. Second, I think, is that Prime Minister Modi and the fact that this is happening in the ninth year of his, of his prime ministership, it, I mean, in many ways symbolizes the fact that America recognizes that Prime Minister Modi is the front runner for 2024, willing to invest in India and go beyond that. That's interesting. Raymond Vickery? Uh, you know, we've heard some discordant tones uh, in, in U.S. Capitol Hill, uh, 70 uh, U.S. lawmakers uh, asking President Biden to raise issues of what they see as human rights, democratic freedoms in India under question. How do you see it? Are those voices very marginal in your view to the overall picture? Well, thanks very much for having me. This is a great day in U.S.-India relations. It's uh, part of a continuum. When I was in government in the Clinton administration, uh, India decided to dismantle its license Raj. Uh, President Clinton went in, uh, to India. It was very well received uh, in the parliament. Uh, and that has continued through Republican and uh, Demo uh, Democratic administrations alike. Uh, your guests have talked about the U.S.-India civil nuclear deal, which uh, I worked on. I think that the really good news is that across the political spectrum in the United States, whether it be Republican or Democratic, there is very, very strong support for the U.S.-India relationship, and that goes for the Congress as well. As you know, uh, the Prime Minister will uh, address a joint session of Congress. Uh, you mentioned the 70 people, uh, members who have um, raised human rights. Uh, that, to me, is not an indication of weakness in the relationship. It's an indication of strength. The fact is that we are both imperfect democracies, and the price of democracy is eternal vigilance and working uh, to improve it. As uh, as President Obama used to say, to make us a more perfect union, as is set forth in our Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, there are problems on both sides. We have our problems in terms of racial and religious uh, discrimination. India has theirs. These are not to be swept under the rug. And it is, to me, a, an indication of the depth of the friendship that both sides are able to raise these issues uh, and work uh, to resolve them rather than just saying, well, uh, the enemy of my in a, uh, fr friend, he becomes my friend. If, we're, mm -hmm. if we both have the same enemy, China, then we're friends. Uh, that's not enough. Uh, the economic uh, uh, portion of the relationship that you've described is going uh, forward. 
but there's still a lot of barriers uh, to be done. And to look at this just as sort of uh, the culmination and everything is going to be great from here on out is not the case. The question is, what are these uh, agreements and what is this relationship for? And I would say that that's where values come in and the values are in fact interests of both the United States uh, and India and they are peace and prosperity and not just peace and prosperity within one country or on our borders, right. but throughout the world. That's what a great nation does and that's what India is.